Then, in the aftermath of his grief, Feynman was forced to confront the reality of what he had helped create. They gave out dark glasses, said you could watch us. 20 miles away, they're going to see a damn thing through dark glasses. What I figured, ultra, the only thing that really hurt your eye, bright light never can hurt your eye, it's ultraviolet light that does. So I got behind a truck windshield, so that the ultraviolet can't go through glass, and that would be safe. And so I could see the damn thing. I'm about the only guy in the world who actually looked at the damn thing in the first Trinity test. Three weeks later, America prepared to detonate a second atom bomb. This time, it wasn't a test. He had been expected to go as the scientist with the first flight. But the bomb was so successful, they decided they didn't need a scientist. So he did not go. Otherwise, he would have been in that plane. The bomb exploded above the Japanese city of Hiroshima on the 6th of August, 1945. It killed more than 80,000 people. Three days later, a second bomb was detonated at Nagasaki. It was a very considerable elation and excitement. And there was uh, kind of parties and people got drunk and uh, it would make tremendously interesting contrast of what was going on in Los Alamos at the same time as what was going on in Hiroshima. Feynman was deeply disturbed by the knowledge he had contributed to the deaths of so many. He had had this great triumph on the technical level at Los Alamos and then of course a terrible letdown afterwards having run this tremendous race and then at the end of it concluded that it wasn't, in, in fact, worthwhile. In the months after this double trauma, first losing his wife, then realizing the destruction he'd helped unleash, Feynman was thrown into darkness. Maybe from just the bomb itself and maybe for some other psychological reasons I had just lost my wife. I was really in a kind of depressive condition. <laughs>